Okay, let's start. So welcome to, to this talk um, where I will present you my own DB product, which is a, a web-based data management system, which is available at myondb.com, uh, but that we have published uh, under an open source license, the AGPL version 3. So this talk will give you an introduction to the, to the system, where it comes from. We'll then go deeper in the, the concepts uh, for the data structure behind uh, the product at the back end. And then we'll see how you can customize it to, to your needs. So it's not only open source, but we try to document everything also. Um, We'll also look at the openness of the system and the fu future, and uh, I'll be available for questions, of course. You can also raise your questions during the talk, so we can make it more interactive. Don't hesitate to let me know if something is not clear. So, the origins of the, the system, it was started really as an experiment in 2005, and uh, actually, after FOSDEM, uh, you might know I'm very, I was very uh, active uh, with FOSDEM and uh, during FOSDEM it was not possible to work on something like that but after FOSDEM I needed some, some time to spend on technical matter just uh, thinking, uh, focusing on technical matter and I started this as an experiment not thinking I could go farther than just playing with it but the more I coded on it and the more uh, I saw there were possibilities to, to manage information with that. So the goals of this experiment was to have ex extreme flexibility in the data management, in the information storing. It was to also have uh, easy extensibility, just not a static system, but really that you can extend easily that you could also store complex data types that you don't, you don't have to, to only use integers or a string, etc. But you can go much further than that. And an easy administration, just not uh, clumsy uh, administration with uh, an interface you don't understand or with comments you don't understand. Just easy administration so that a lot of people can have access to information management and also localized uh, localized user interface so that it's really near the near to the, the user so it took one year of uh, experimenting and after that it was uh, published on myondb.com uh, as a web uh, web tool so at that time it was not open source yet uh, that experiment then slept a bit during one year. Uh, I didn't put a lot of time in it anymore. Uh, and in 2007, uh, I joined forces with the company ZeroPoint.it, who has some uh, programmers in Belgium and in Pakistan. And finally, we published the source code in July to 2008. It, did, it didn't happen earlier because we know that publishing the source code is not sufficient to have a successful release. So we wanted to, to put time in, in the management of the project and in July 2008 it's materialized. So what exactly is MyOnDB? Well, it's a web database which provides a web-based management and end-user tool. So you can manage everything through a web interface from the administration, so creation your data structure, to the end-user tools, adding data, managing data. It is multilingual, so it can be translated in uh, several languages easily. So the three languages we have worked on are French, English and Dutch. Uh, but it's really easy, it's one text file to, tr to translate, to have it in another language. Uh, we use UTF-8 uh, at all levels, 
So all the data, all the templates, all everything in the system is, is stored in, with uh, UTF-8 encoding. We want to provide easy information management, so there's no headache on when you create your data structure. You don't have to to manage the foreign keys uh, when you're linking tables. You no, don't have to, to focus on the primary keys. So that is managed internally to the, to the system. We provide also advanced dat data types. So for example, we have the, the file attachment. So it's really a data type like another. You can attach files to, to a record in the database. Uh, for example, a picture of uh, your contact or a scan of the contracts uh, you signed with the company. You can also export it to a standard uh, database. So we have a, an export engine. Um, the first uh, database we support export, we support export to is uh, PostgreSQL. And then we have also a complete API to integrate the, the data store in your applications. So MyOnDB is built on a free and open source system. We are using PostgreSQL as the, the backend database. I see someone smiling here. <laughs> uh, the system itself is developed in Ruby on Rails. So uh, it started with uh, Ruby on Rails before the, the first version of Ruby on Rails was released. So the first stable version was released. So we have followed the evolution of Ruby on Rails from the start. And we are, we are benefiting from the popularity of this framework, uh, which helps us to, to add functionalities to the system. For the user interface, we have uh, decided to standardize on the Yahoo user interface library, which is providing widgets and facilities to develop uh, a rich web interface. So we are storing all everything in a PostgreSQL database. So uh, in the database, we have identified uh, two zones. One zone is the definition zone, where we store every, all the data that is uh, describing the data structure of your database. So in this, in this zone, we have entities which are equivalent to the tables in normal databases. We have the details, which are the equivalent to the columns. In a, in a normal database. And we have relations, which are the equivalent of the constraints or the many-to-many the, the -many relation tables in a standard database. So when you create a, a table in MyOnDB, it's an entry that is added in the entities table. When you add a column, which we call a detail, it's simply a detail that is added in this table. So you see, it's really easy to, to define your table, your MyOnDB table, in this PostgreSQL table. The relations, yes? You also support one-to-many relations. Yes, yes, we, we support. Uh, all relations in all in all directions and uh, you can name those relations so when you you name those relations when the user enters data or wants to link a record he knows which relations he is using based on the name you give it and you give a name to the relation from parent to child and another name from child to parents so for an example, if you have a, a database of um, a singer with uh, songs, uh, you have a relation sing, singer to songs, which you can name sings. So the singer sings that song. And in the other direction, you can name it is sung by. So this song is sung by this singer. So the, the end user has clear information of what this data is about. So we try to really 
to bring ease of use of a data structure. And when you define this, uh, this data schema, you don't have to define a foreign key. So it's handled with this internal table. It's not something that is really visible to the end user. For the end user, it's just I link uh, an entry in this table, in the singer table, with an entry in this songs table. So that is for the definition zone. Once you have your definition zone that is ready, you can start uh, add data to the system. And this data will be added in the instanti instantiation zone. So we have instances, which is clearly an instance of an entity. And this is the equivalent to a record in a standard database. Each instance has detail values. So for each detail, we have one detail value, which is the equivalent of a column's value in a relational database. For the instances, we have the links, which is related to the relations. So the relation is the definition. <laughs> You define that a song will be linked to a singer. And when you define a singer, you can link it to a, a song. So we have really two zones in the, in the PostgreSQL database, two zones in the, in the underlying database on which we built the MyOnDB databases. So let's take an example. This is a, a row in a table in a standard database. So we have an ID, we have a name, first name, the age, and the country ID. So the country ID is uh, a foreign key linking to a table with all the countries. Then we have one record in, the, in this table with uh, ID 1, Linus Torvalds, his age, and his country ID. When we look at this, when we put this in the MyOnDB system, we will end up with the definition of the table, so the name of the table and all columns, which will be put in these tables these PostgreSQL tables. So this is really looking at the back end, how we are working at the back end. The end user won't see that. If you want just to administrate the system, you won't need to look at that. That's really interesting if you want to, to uh, program on the system or ex expand it. So we will end up with an entry in the entities table, which is the name of the table. Let's call it people. We have entries in the details table, one entry for each, uh, for each column, except for this one, because we don't need to care for, uh, about the, the primary keys. So the primary keys are handled internally. We have data types. We are using several data types, simple text data types, integer data type, and here we have a data type that we call uh, a choice in a list. So you can define a, a, a data type. You have a data type you can use, which is a choice in a list. And when you define a data structure, you, you type all the choices that will be available to the end user. You do that once, and then when the user enters the data, he gets a drop-down list in which he has to choose, the, in this case, the country. So here, the foreign key is not present to the end, visible to the end user. For the end user, it's just a choice 
in a drop-down list. He doesn't care. He doesn't have to care. If it's another table or not. Even for the the administrator. Can you reuse them then again in another table or another? Uh, uh, yes. Table? Yes. So uh, details can be reused uh, with uh, several uh, entities in the same database. So you, for the moment, you cannot reuse a detail you have defined in another database. So a detail is defined in the, the scope of the database. So that was about the definition of the table. Once we, we have the table defined, we can enter data. So this record will end up with data one entry in the instances table, entries in the detail values table, one for each column. We have the detail value propositions, which are storing the multiple choice values of the drop-down list. And then we can have links, which I didn't use here as the country ID is a multiple choice list. If I had defined another table in which I stored the countries, I could have used a relation and a link to link to that country. Any questions up to here? Is it clear enough? Okay. So you could think that uh, having all this data split overall these tables is a headache. Well, PostgreSQL comes to the rescue because in the contrib modules we have table func function, which is there to rebuild a virtual table based on the data spread on all the in all the different tables. So. This is really a big help for us at, uh, when we are displaying data in the web interface. The backend is rebuilding the table, the virtual table, from all the data that is spread in the instances table, in the entities table, the detail values, etc. So this is a great help for the, the web interface, but it is not usable in the REST API because the REST API exposes all the tables, the underlying tables in the PostgreSQL <laughs> database. So with the REST API, you have access to the detail values, you have access to the details, you have access to the instances, and for each of these tables, we provide also all the data, so the IDs of these entries in these tables. So table func is not usable for the REST API. Yes? Is it possible to use another database management system? Uh, in theory, yes. Uh, in practice, we didn't look at it. Uh, in theory, it is certainly possible. <coughs> but the reason we, we chose Postgres uh, or multiple, uh, first, uh, preference. Uh, Postgres SQL is really providing a lot of functionalities that are of big help here because we, when you have tables split on all data split on over all those tables you you'd better be sure that you don't have uh, keys foreign keys that don't that are uh, linking to a, an entry that was deleted we needed the triggers we needed uh, foreign keys uh, table funk was of great help uh, so, it's, in theory, it's certainly possible to, to put it on another system, but we didn't put the energy uh, in that. If, if this is something you want to discuss, uh, we can discuss it oh, after the... So okay, <laughs> so if you want to, to take a closer look to, to that, I'm, I'm interested also, so... So, it might seem 
somewhat complicated to have spl split the data over several tables, but it brings some advantages. So it, one of the advantage is that uh, it is a very consistent system. For every data type, we have the same approach. So whatever the, the data type, it's the same structure. You have the details, the detail values. It's really, we don't have to, to change anything for if we want to add a data type. It's following the same structure. So once you have understood how the system is built, you can add your data types easily. It's really the same, the same approach. It's really flexible also because you can get to, the, to each data element individually. Uh, and for example, the flexibility is uh, illustrated by the fact that we can export to any database because we have all this information about the data structure is available, readily available, so you can easily export it to a, another database. And it's really extensible thanks to also this consistency. So what is a, a data type? Well, defining a new, new data type is just defining a new Ruby class. So we are built, uh, MyOnDB is built on uh, Ruby on Rails, which is uh, providing an object, uh, an ORM. So mapping the objects in Ruby to the database. And adding a data type is just writing a Ruby class. You have to implement basically three methods. One, to form row. This is a method that is used to display an entry in the entry form to add data to the system. So uh, you provide this method to display it in a form. The self.formatDetail method is used to display the value in the, in the list, for example. So the first one is for editing and uh, inputting. The second one is for displaying. The third one is to validate the value that has been entered. So you can put constraints on the data you, you accept, and this method will validate it. So a user cannot enter a value in a detail if the, the, validity, the validity is not confirmed by, the, by this method. So you can see the flexibility, flexibility this brings. You don't only have checks on integer, string, etc. You can also validate the format of the, of the string that was entered. You can validate on the range of the integer. You can really uh, validate everything you, you want. Because this is Ruby code, so it's not a specific uh, code that we have developed. It's really standard Ruby code. You have all the facilities you, you need, uh, regular expressions, uh, you name it. This is standard Ruby code. And the data type can be, re can be very simple. The simplest data type is uh, simple text, where you accept everything. The valid uh, method returns true for everything. Another very simple data type is the date detail value. So this one accepts a date. The valid, the method uh, validating the value is just looking that it's a valid date. Just uh, not accepting text or not accept, accepting 30 February, for example. Uh, but 
beyond that, it's just accepting the data. It can be very, very complex. Uh, for example, we have fi file attachments that are stored on S3 from uh, Amazon. Uh, and that is really also only one Ruby class. Uh, all the data types all have the same structure. One Ruby class. Of course, the file attachment on S3 is longer, is more complex, because you are accepting the, the file, then putting it on Amazon S3, and then linking it to the system. But basically, it's based on those three methods and overriding the save method. So the, the two form row for the S3 de detail will just display uh, a file, a file input. And when we call the format detail on such a S3 attachment, the link, it will be displayed as a link to S3. So the user will get the file directly from S3 and not from our local system. And you can overwrite all the methods provided by Active Records, which is the mapping tool to the database. And this is something we do in the choice in a list data, where we overwrite the methods to, to give the, the value that was stored. So, uh, you can really overwrite every single step of the saving procedure of a detail value and achieve what you want. Here is an example of a, a screenshot from a list that was dis displayed. Here, the address is not, dis not displayed as a link. It's not a problem with the system, it's a problem with the user. I didn't put here a URL uh, data type, so it was displayed as simple text. So that's my fault. If I had put here a URL data type, it would have been displayed as a link that you can click immediately. Just as is done for the email data type. So the email data type is displayed as a mail to link which will open your mail software if you click on it and this is done with the the format detail method we saw earlier here we have an example of the the form that is displayed so that is the two form row. Here, simple text, a choice in a list, which is displayed as a drop down list. An email, it's just a simple text. If invalid data is put inputted in this field, there is a, a call sent to the to the server to validate the data. If the data is invalid, the field will be displayed in red. So the user immediately knows that <coughs> his data is not valid, doesn't have to wait to submit the form. And here we have the, the entry for a file attachment data type. Was that clear for the data types? Don't hesitate to let me know if I'm not clear enough. So MyOnDB is the product we provide on MyOnDB.com. And the engine powering, powering that application is called the Dominon. So the Dominon is actually the software, the engine beyond, 
behind myondb.com. And that system is multilingual. So in the origin, we developed uh, a specific translation system so that we could provide the system in, in multiple languages. So in, in the beginning, Ruby on Rails was not providing the infrastructure to, to have uh, websites or web applications available in multiple languages. But now, with the evolution of Ruby on Rails, there is a plugin called Globalite, which uh, we are using now to translate the user interface. So the user interface translations are located in one file and if you want to make your own translation you start from with the, the English one th and you translate every entry there are I think something like 200 entries to be translated for a language to be complete so we can go behind customization of with the, our data types by using what is called the, the Rails engine. So Rails engines are providing really a framework to extend the application and to go further than a simple plugin. So you can add new actions to the applications. Uh, and for example, our REST API is built as an engine uh, which is which can be seen as a plugin to the domino so if you want to to customize the the system very heavily and if you want to add really advanced functionalities you can do it with the race engines <coughs> so the REST API, which is a REST engine, uh, rail engine, uh, is nearly finished. So it's a work in progress, but we are really finishing it. And it gives access to all, your, to all the functionalities of the systems. So it gives you access to the backend, not only on the data that is displayed in the web uh, interface, but really to the backend of the system with the data structure I just explained with the instances, the, in, the, the entities, the details, detail values, etc. The REST API is providing the data in JSON format for the moment, uh, but uh, we can also provide XML and YAML. So we start with uh, JSON just to debug the system completely. After that, we can go further. So we want to provide also a very open system and there is an export uh, functionality, an export engine and you can, thanks to that, export your data to a standard database system. It exports your data and your data schema. So you can, in one step, have your database created and populated with your data from MyOnDB from the MyOnDB database you run. So the database we can export to now is PostgreSQL because this is the database we know the best. But it's really easy to write an export module because the PostgreSQL specific code is only 80 lines of codes. So if you want to export it to, My, to MySQL, for example, it shouldn't be much longer than 80 lines of code. It's really, we have a, an engine that is processing the MyOnDB database, looking at the data structure and passing all this information to the export driver, which is actually creating the database to be created. So, it's open in every sense and also in the, in the coding sense. Um, we have published it as a, an open source project at uh, thedominon.org. 
uh, we manage the code there. So all the code is available there and managed uh, with uh, Git. There, there are also mailing lists where we, we are ready to, to communicate about the system, the developments we are doing. You will find there bug tracking uh, documentation. We have put uh, quite a lot of documentation there if you are interested to, to use the system but also uh, develop on it. And we are really interesting, interested to, to work together. Now that we have a, a solid foundation, we think, uh, we are looking to, to the future. And uh, we, have, we hope to, to have other people joining us in this future. So, because there are still lots of things to do. We can uh, still add new data types. We have to work on a rest, r right to left interface. So for the moment, we only support the languages which are written from left to right. Uh, we could uh, use some advanced reporting in the, the application. And we don't have any import functionality at this time. Uh, import functionality will be possible, for example, with uh, the REST API, but also with uh, other integrated functionalities, like a new race engine, for example. And we are really e eager to build a community around uh, this project. So all people involved in the, um, in the project are uh, open source believers. So uh, we are active in the community for uh, some time now. And uh, we hope that other people will join us to, to develop the system. We are listening to, to feedback. Uh, so, uh, if, you, if you take a look, let us know what you think and uh, contributions are welcome, of course. So, maybe we can start the discussion now if you have questions and uh, take a note of my email address and thedominon.org, the website, uh, so we can take a, take a look, try the system, let us know what you think. and. Hopefully, we can work together to expand the, the system. So, if you have questions, yes? I have a question about uh, um, the custom data types. Um, I was wondering about uh, performance, and because in, in Postgres you can uh, also define your own custom data types on the database level. I mean, it's 20, 30 lines of C code, and basically, you have your own data type. Mm -hmm. that also, um, Postgres knows about and knows about uh, building indexes for the comparison operators and all. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and which relates to my second question: is scalability. What, what about if you have two hundred million records? Uh, okay. Yeah. And you want to select stuff. How does that? Uh, yeah. So, for the first part, um, I simplified the presentation in the sense that not all uh, detail values are stored in one data in one table. So, so we are, for the date detail value, for example, we are using a specific table where we store all the date uh, values. So at that time, we are using the PostgreSQL data type, and we are using it also, for example, for sorting. That's really, that's one of the reasons we, we had to use it, is, for example, for sorting. If you store everything in one table, in one text field, it becomes a headache to, to sort. Um, so we are, and for comp comparison also. So we are actually using the PostgreSQL data type also. Um, we are, for the moment, uh, the, the databases we, we handle are not as big as 200 million uh, records. So uh, we have uh, data databases with hundreds of thousands of records. Uh, the performance is not uh, the performance of a native database uh, like Postgres. Uh, and that's also why we, ex we provide the export functionality. So that if the, the system doesn't uh, fit anymore 
the database, the, uh, the, the infrastructure, people can export it to a native database. Uh, the goal here is really to provide an easy to start system in which you can start easily uh, without having to, to work too hard uh, on setting it up. In, in a short time you have a, a system to, work, to start with which is also expandable so you can s continue to use it a, a long time but if your, your needs become too, too big, you can still migrate to a native database. So we don't want to, our goal is not here to, to replace native databases, it's really to, to be a complement to, to native databases. Uh, does that answer? Yes? What would be a typical use case for using it? Or what kind of application would you use it? Well, uh, the, the good example is uh, replacing a simple access database to start with. A lot of people are using access to start a data database on their computer. You don't know if it's backed up. Uh, is it multi-user? I don't think so. Uh, can you easily export it? <coughs> no. Uh, so it's, uh, it's that kind of use that we, we start to, 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 to aim at. But it's, not, it's really not limited uh, at that. Uh, so you can also use it to, to have a middle class database. Uh, where you, you store uh, <coughs> multiple data types, you know, I mean, uh, when you have, I use it personally to, to store scans of paper, I might need some time in the future. Uh, I really hate paper. My wife will be happy if I would use it too. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I had papers uh, more and more paper. What I do now is just scanning it. Uh, I created a, li a little database, one table, a title, description, file attachment. I upload that and I know that I have my data there. I, I don't have to, to care with this, this paper, etc. Um, but there are you can use it. It's a, it's a system that is based uh, as an easy to, to start with system, but that you, you can expand la later on. So it's also if you're starting a database <coughs> and you still don't know yet yes. exactly what for prototyping. Yeah, for prototyping it's uh, really a perfect system because in, in five minutes you can create your, your structure, multiple tables, linking them. Uh, how, do you, can you, how do you create reports? Well, that's something we have to work on. Okay. That is something we have but to work on. That's what you notice, you make a database, you design it, you, you enter some data. Yeah, you can start. You make a report and you, then you see you, yeah? Yeah. You make a mistake somewhere in your design of your database. And that's uh, what do you mean by a report? Uh, oh yeah, that's very difficult to get to some data. Or okay, well... It's always a reiterative process. Yes. To, to, yeah, yeah. to design your, well, your data. Yeah, you can, use, uh, you can use the system here to, to, to make a first prototype of your database system. Uh, put data in it. See, validate the, the approach. Uh, you can use the standard interface, web interface, to use it some time to see if it's uh, fitting your needs. Um, if it's fitting your needs, you can continue using it or translate it in another system or build a dedicated interface on the system because we provide a web interface which is a generic web interface but you can build a new web interface on it especially with the, the REST API where we are finishing right now. Any other questions? Um, maybe I missed it, what lies?
A A G P L version three. Yeah. Any other question? Well, thank you for uh, your attention, and I look forward to getting your feedback about the system.